OK, it would just so happen that David Barnson is, going to be, is with us and he's going to be with us for the hour. And throughout your report on Microsoft, he was gritting his teeth. What's wrong? It was the idea that they did something wrong and the stock's down 3% after being up, you know, 70%. It's just, this is the problem of public markets, is uh, people are sitting here trading, it's up and down in valuation. Fundamentals, this is why I like dividend, because you, it doesn't lie. You get dividend growth over time to really measure. Right now, Microsoft had a great quarter. And it's down 3% because it's so overpriced. It's trading at 38 times earnings. They could have the best quarter of their life and be down 20% when you're trading that expensively. Valuations distort reality, Stuart. All right. That's what you were gritting your teeth over? Oh, wait, there's wait, a lot of things. Wait, wait till we get to over. the Fed, young man. Oh, that's true. The Fed is a bigger <laughs> issue, yes. Stick around, please, David. We need you. Well, after rebranding Twitter as X... Elon Musk could be facing legal trouble. Lauren, yep. is this just a trademark yeah, dispute? It, it, it seems so. There are 900 active trademark registrations for X, including from Microsoft. Think Xbox. Separately, I'm not sure if I should call Twitter X Corp or Twitter. Do you want to pick? Should we go with Twitter? X Corp. Okay. They're cutting. What, what are you supposed to call them? How do you trademark a letter? I want the letter A. And or, the font of the letter. Yeah, just, it's a whole complicated thing. Hence, 900 different trademarks The for story it. about this is surely that he wants to create an everything app. You got any comment in 15 seconds? In less than that. <laughs> nothing he's doing really makes sense to me, and I don't want to bet against Elon Musk. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's so like, you, almost so a contradiction. So you're in it for the it. sensation of it, the craziness. And, well, as a private company, most of us are just watching right now, but it's really bizarre. Now to the 2024 race, Governor DeSantis cutting staff from his campaign team. Uh, are people taking that as a sign he's losing steam? Uh, Trump's PAC is responding to this, and he says Team DeSantis has lit tens of millions of dollars on fire. In return, he's seen a collapse in polling. The people left to suffer are a few dozen staffers. If Ron actually cared about spending the money wisely, he'd refund every dollar he has left and go back to governing Florida. Uh, he's gritting his teeth again. He's sitting right next to you. What do you got to say? 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Uh, this thing is very early. It's been a tough month. There's a self-fulfilling prophecy to this. The media says everything's going poorly in their campaign, so it means sure. it's going poorly. Most campaigns would kill for his numbers, and that $20 million is in the real campaign. It ignores the PAC. The super PAC is another 130 Politico million. is reporting that there is a great divide between never back down and, Politico is wrong. and the DeSantis and po Politico team. Politico is making up out of thin air. I say this with very good information. Hmm. Well, what an opening A block we have on the show today. Good stuff indeed. Thank you very much, David. Hold it for one second, Eddie. Uh, David, uh, David's with us. Uh, you think a recession is coming? I think that it is possible. I think it will end up being very mild if it does. But the thing I would say to his point about oh, it's the labor market holding together. First of all, credit spreads haven't widened that much. And when you talk about commercial real estate weakening, I think for new financing, there's been some challenges. But no one would say commercial real estate's weakening in industrial, in self-storage, in multifamily. It's in office and retail that there's been some struggles in select pockets, San Francisco, Seattle. That's not related to cost of capital. So I think that overall, it's so far has kind of floated along in the Fed's favor, they could get out of this easy. It's just that they keep pushing. Let's get back to Meta. It reports after the bell. What are we expecting? Meta's up 145% this year. It was down 70% last year. And you know why it was down last year? Because of doing Meta. Meta. Yeah, that's right. And then this year it's back up because they're not doing Meta. <laughs> and it's, it pays to be a CEO who gets to vote all the stock. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, Snap. I saw this thing just tumble, and it's still tumbling. It's down 18% yeah. now. Why is Barnson laughing when the stock's down 18%? What, do you short it or something? No, I... I just have come on the show for years talking about the fact that they've never made a single dollar, yeah. ever. So the revenues or market share or anything, it's just a company that sets money on fire every single quarter while teenagers act stupid with it. That's the company. <laughs> and wow. pay $4 a month. And four, four million of them spending three ninety nine a month to act stupid with yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I guarantee that Senators Elizabeth Warren and the chair of the Senate Budget Committee will disapprove of the following story. A big share buyback at Wells Fargo. I'm going to go fast to give this one to David. Wells Fargo <laughs> is repurchasing 30 billion shares and increasing their dividend to 35 cents. They cleared the Fed stress tests and they did report a 57% profit growth in the past quarter. I love share buybacks. 
Um, it depends. I prefer dividend growth because it's real cash a lot. And it's $30 billion of shares. And remember, it's a buyback plan. They don't have to do it. You don't know what they buy back until they report it later so they can announce it. And a lot of it is used to replace stock that's given to executives and compensation. Hmm. So I like dividends better because it's real cash for Stewart and David. And if you hold on for a second, we'll get to your dividend plays. Yeah. AT&T. <laughs> Where's at t this morning? It's down. Uh, it's yeah. $14 a share. It's a, it was a mixed quarter. Look, earnings were better, free cash flow was higher, but revenue missed, and they added fewer wireless subscribers than, than expected, and the stock is essentially not reacting. I almost bought AT&T at 20 because it had a wonderful dividend, and you talked me out of it. I oh. did, I did, because they Thank cut you. their dividend 50% after 30 years of not doing so. We had sold it before that, and I told you, once they bought Time Warner and DirecTV, they over-indebted themselves. The dividend wasn't safe anymore, Stuart. The FTC, Federal Trade Commission, wants to break up Amazon. I think the government is trying to show that huge, giant, is the same as monopolistic. And I think that's wrong. Well, and that was the old Robert Bork legal principal, who was the antitrust uh, legal scholar of the last hundred years. He said it has to hurt consumers. Being big is not enough. It has to hurt consumers. What she's talking about, who could argue it hurts consumers for us to get recommendations and other things uh, on their e-commerce? The issue is on their bundling of the cloud, their business that they have basically unrelated to e-commerce. And I think the stock would go up if they separated that. I think that they have one with a lower multiple. They separate those out. It could be a bigger business. I think it's time we got to the dividend plays. Uh, David is the dividend guy. and He's brought a couple with him. The first one is Molis which I've never heard of, but you're going to tell me about. So Molis is an investment bank, a big company here in Wall Street, and all they do is advise on deals, and M&A, I think, is coming back. I think that people are going to start buying and selling companies, and it's a big dividend payer. They pay out all 100% of free cash flow and dividends. So right now, the yield is around 5%, and that'll stay at about 7% as they keep growing profits. 5 to 7% on a... And unlike Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, they don't have a balance sheet with a bunch of risk. It's just advice. Business. What do you got on Lyondell? So Lyondell, I've talked to you about before. It's a company that um, d- works in petrochemicals. They do plastics, cosmetics. It's, it affects a lot of Americans, but they're using natural gas and other natural gas liquids. They're a big kind of uh, arbitrage against crude oil prices. Yeah. Um, we think Lyondell, 5% yield, they've grown it every year for 10 years, is right now really undervalued, 5.3% yield. Five percent, I'll take. Thank you very much, David. David is still with me, clenching his teeth. Uh, I did say, if we raise interest rates, will that kill inflation? It will not in the sense that our problem with inflation was supply side. We need the economy producing more goods and services. And right now, inflation has come down for reasons totally separate from the Fed. I think that issue about slow and steady growth, low, no slow growth is what I call it. It isn't just steady. We don't have economic growth. We don't have enough incentive for production. Yeah, we need growth. And that's a fact. David, thank you. A strike by UPS workers uh, avoided. A tentative deal has been reached. Lydia, who's on the story? They've got a big pay raise. Yeah. Uh, Are we going to see wage inflation? Yeah, Stuart, I think we might. And there are some economists that are really concerned about a wage price spiral. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, Lydia, thank you very much indeed. Quick comment from Mr. Barnson, who does not believe that we're going to have wage inflation. No, we just simply haven't. Inflation got up to over 9% and people were talking about wage price spiral. It didn't happen. The connection between wages and the overall price level is totally misunderstood. And you actually have some wage deflation in certain aspects of the economy. So some sectors are seeing higher inflation, particularly unionized. Others are seeing a lot less. But remember, companies can always hire less, too. So the total cost of employment doesn't go higher. So I don't have to worry. Well, it's not that you don't have to worry. It's just that I think economically, these models that the Fed is using from the 1970s are broken. They don't work. Dramatic uh, news from uh, David here. But David, seriously, thanks very much for being on the show all morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir.